Hey, it's NPR's Book of the Day. I'm Andrew Limbong. The poet Ada Limon just got named the U.S. Poet Laureate. It's one of those jobs that it is whatever you make it to be, you know? Encouraging the appreciation and creation of poetry in this country is a pretty broad goal, and different people approach it in different ways. The previous Poet Laureate, Joy Harjo, had been in the position since 2019. And last year, she talked to NPR's Michelle Martin about her poetic memoir, Poet Warrior. And she talked about how she didn't see herself becoming a poet growing up. Being a native person, she thought, okay, my community needs health care, and doctors, so that's what I'm going to do. Until she saw other Native poets and realized that poetry fulfills a need, too. Before Joy Harjo became a renowned poet, artist, and editor, she was a quiet child who was more likely to take in the world from the sidelines than become the center of attention. But in a powerful and, yes, poetic new memoir, the U.S. Poet Laureate charts the journey to finding her voice and finally learning how to use it. And she shares the lessons she's learned along the way. It's called Poet Warrior, and Joy Harjo is with us now to tell us more about it. Welcome back to this program. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you so much for inviting me. We last spoke with you about the gorgeous anthology of Native poetry that you co-edited, and that's just one of your many published works. I mean, you have authored, what, nine poetry collections, and you've even published a previous memoir called Crazy Brave. So what were you hoping for with this new work? Why this book and why now? This book was written during the pandemic, (laughs) you know, you know, a time of great political division, climate change, all of those parts of the story that every one of us is is confronting and dealing with right now, individually and collectively. It's also a time in the life of the age of a country and of a planet and so on to look back and see what our intent is, who we are, uh, who we are becoming. Hmm. Do you have a copy of the book in front of you? I do hope yes, so. I do. Oh, wonderful. Would you mind reading the the I'm going to call it a poem that begins on page 36 with One Night When Girl Warrior Was Out Traveling. One night when Girl Warrior was out traveling in dreaming time, she went looking for the fire. That's where the old ones sat and watched and looked after those who were left behind in the earth story. She stood at the edge and waited respectfully to be called over. Fire was friendly and within it many colors that cannot be found on earth. Fire was singing as it rose up to give back the wisdom of its flames. Girl warrior was motioned in. She sat down next to her kin. She listened. It was the fire that kept her ear turned toward story. There was a girl, fire sang, who left us for earth during star rise. In her pack she was given poetry. Every gift has tests before they can be opened to be shared. I just shut the door. Let's just stop now. <laughs> just, just, it's just, there's so many beautiful images and ideas. People might be surprised to learn you weren't immediately drawn to poetry. You actually started college as a pre-med student, and you had a whole other life before that. So many experiences that will be known to many people, uh, really, around the world of disruption in the home, uh, unhappiness, seeing, you know, men come into your mother's life who had various intentions. I'll just sort of put it that way. I guess the reason I bring that up is that you were so drawn to healing as a young person. And then you got interested in painting. And I just wondered, when did poetry feel like the right fit for you? I think what shifted there was that I loved words and, and I loved poetry as a child growing up. But I never saw them as something that really belonged to me. But it wasn't until I heard Native poets, I think, that I realized that, well, this is a powerful tool of understanding and affirmation. And I don't know, I just started writing. And of course, my first poems weren't very good, but I started writing and and then something took over. I don't know how to explain it, except there I was writing poetry. 
And I kept going with it, even when it seemed impossible to keep going with it. You know, especially as a student, you know, when you say, okay, I'm majoring in pre-med and you're a native and we need doctors and we need and needed attorneys and we need and needed educators of all sorts. But a poet? What's a poet? You know, where, what, what uses poetry? But there was something beyond my everyday knowing that I've learned to pay attention and to follow. I was also so interested in how you deal with pain and the pain inflicted particularly by, by others. You talk about, for example, your stepfather. You say, you know, I didn't ask for the stepfather. He was not my choice. It was my mother's decision to bring him into our lives. And you say that yet he is probably one of my greatest teachers. Because of him, I learned to find myself in the spiritual world. To escape him, I grew an immense house of imagination. And I just, I was so struck by that. Um, Because you're not excusing any of the things that he did, but you are claiming it, if that makes sense. Would you mind talking just a bit more about how you think about pain and the pain points that both you've experienced and that those you love have experienced and by extension that your community has experienced? I think what I've learned to do in maybe writing and and reading, I read all kinds of things from novels to quantum physics to um, books on acupressure, etc. And poetry, of course, teaches me that everything everything is energy and pain points to something it's it's a compacted point and there's a story in there and so you can u- either use it against yourself or you can use it as a tool and at one point i remember when i was pretty depressed i was a student at the university of new mexico and i was having a really really hard time but i had to keep going and i came to a decision that instead of destroying myself with this accumulation of injustice and pain, that I would look closely at all the materials and repurpose them, so to speak, (laughs) to use a word. And one way to do that was to try to, to hear the stories and try to understand. I think forgiveness is important, but it doesn't mean that the story didn't happen or that it didn't cause pain to, you know, even the perpetrator So the other part of what you were reading about that stepfather is, you know, even the monster has a story. Hmm. It put together, you know, sort of how I've come about trying to deal with so much, you know, historical trauma, which is the story of this whole country, if you think about it. Hmm. But certainly indigenous communities, which are at the forefront of that story, and yet we've been... um, essentially disappeared for the most part from the American story. Hmm. Well, it's always a delight to speak with you. I mean, honestly, I could talk to you all day. Um, But back to the business, you've been renamed the U.S. Poet Laureate. This means you're now in your third term. Has this been a good experience for you? What's it been like? I've been deeply moved by the experience. And, And again, I've come to see how useful and beautiful and absolutely necessary poetry is to all of us. That is U.S. Poet Laureate Joy Harjo. Her new memoir, Poet Warrior, is out now. Joy Harjo, thank you so much for joining us once again. Uh, Thank you so much, Michelle Martin, for your care of the stories. 